All right, so we're looking at Blender 2.5 Alpha 1. I'm just going to do a really, really fast crash course. So if you prefer quad view, just go view, toggle quality of your perspective, top, front, right. In any view, if you hit 5 on the numpad, that'll toggle between orthographic and perspective view. 1 is front, 3 is side, 7 is top. To tumble, alt, left click, to zoom, scroll, and to pan, shift alt, and that'll pan. Alright, so basically how Blender's UI is laid out is just a series of windows. You see that here, 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 and here. All of those are windows. So to open a new window, you just take your crosshair over the parallel lines in the corner and drag. And then to change the contents, you go down here and you could do whatever you want. So, say if you wanted a UV image editor, you could have that here and adjust it. To close it, you just take this and you drag. And you can also do this vertically and collapse it the same way. So it's really customizable user interface. Alright, now for modeling. X we'll delete this go up here add menu this is to add uh, curves and surfaces meshes etc shift a will also bring this up so add cube tab toggles between object and component mode component mode is known as edit mode in uh, blender so to select components you just right click here you choose component type so edge face etc here you choose to include background geometry which turns on opacity or turns it off so when you box select which is B It'll leave these unhighlighted. Same thing applies for paint select, which is C. And if I were to turn this off, now it selects everything. One thing you're going to want to know how to do is if you go up here to this plus, it's going to bring up your transform window, which has things like your vertex coordinates, your meat increase for subdivision surfaces, which I'll go over later, your grid display options, your background images, and things like vertex and face normals, and your edge length, edge angles, and face area. Taking a look at the transform manipulator, you turn it on and off here, and you can switch between move, rotate, and scale. Hockey for move is G, rotate, R, scale, S. Rotate by default will do it on the screen plane. If at any point you wanted to limit one of these actions to an axis, you could do R, then Z, and that limits it to the Z axis. That's the same as turning on the manipulator and rotating it like this. If you wanted to say scale on two axes, so if I wanted to do X and Y, I would do S, and then Shift Z. Shift will lock an axis and scale on everything else so that scales on these two but it stays the same height something that's really awesome about blender is you can create a custom transform manipulator so if I say move this up and I wanted to create a transform that's aligned with this I select the edge or face that I want and then hit control alt space and then it'll create a new one here so global local etc and now edge is the one I just created so if I wanted to move this along this edge I can now do that or if this was, say, now subdivided and there was a vertex, I can now move that along here. It's a really awesome feature. Something else to keep in mind is that um, if you're scaling or rotating, this menu here just brings up what you're doing it relative to. So the median, individual origins, 3D cursor, etc. You might want to look at that if you're getting some funky results. And now snapping. Here you turn on magnet. That'll choose snapping mode. And then here you choose what component you want it to select. So if I wanted to snap to vertices, I would choose vertex. And now if I move, it'll snap to whatever vertex I'm nearest. Something that's cool about this is that if you're doing an action that limits to an axis, like this, and I need to snap to a vertex, I can now select this, move, and move over vertex, and it'll snap to that. Same thing if it was on this axis, see it's too high. If I need to align it with that, move it on the z-axis, snap to that. And the same thing applies for creating custom transform widgets for move, rotate, and scale. You can do that for any of them. Same with the snapping on an axis. Also, hitting Z, X, or Y limits the axis for any of those. Same with shift and an axis to lock it. All right, so now looking at uh, more complex modeling functions, um, A will select everything. W brings up your specials. All these options are also here. So W, subdivide. Here you see there's a new operator window, so you can choose number of cuts. Uh, all of these are sliders also, so for smoothness, this will smooth it. This is actually a really nice feature for subdividing for sculpting because it uh, maintains edges and creases really nice, and you can just choose it. So most of the time I have to take something in ZBrush, I will subdivide it here. So really common functions like selecting an edge loop would be Alt, right click, that will select an edge loop. Again, if you want the ring, just go here and look for select edge ring. I'm just showing you the most common one. To delete one, X will bring up your delete. You go down to edge loop and that just fills it in. Control E and it'll bring up your edge specials, edge slide, and that'll slide along here with the uh, contour of the original. Quick way of inserting edge loop, Control R, you just hover over and it'll preview it for you. 
you click and uh, that'll give you this so you slide it zero if you enter zero manually that'll put it in the center and it's percentage based if you wanted to enter this so it's going to be either negative or positive percentage depending on which direction you go if you go to face select mode and do alt right click the same way and you do it on an edge ring it'll select the loop of faces if you want to fill a hole or bridge something you can select any of the components be it two edges and hit F and it'll do the same thing. F will create anything so if you have say um, two vertices and you want to create an edge you select both of them F that'll create an edge and if you select a third F that'll create a face. Extrude works with any component in Blender you can extrude a, a vertex a face or an edge E is extrude so let's do a face if you select a group of faces and extrude, it'll automatically do it along the normals. Um, if you wanted to extrude them individually, you just go here to the operator box, and instead of region, you choose individual faces. You see now they're each individually extruded. Another one people ask all the time is target weld. In Blender, this is called merge. So all you have to do is pay attention to the order in which you select the vertices. So if I do uh, this one, then this one, Alt-M will bring up the merge. So at first, we'll merge at the first. At last, we'll merge at the second. At center, we'll merge between them. So for target weld, at last, uh, to do this again, uh, Shift-R repeats any action in Blender. So if I do this, then this, Shift-R, it'll merge at the second. If you want to merge more at a time, just select the vertices you want to slide. Control-E, edge slide, take them to the uh, edge loop that you want to merge with. Uh, Shift, and then Alt-Select the edge loop. That'll select the whole loop. W, remove doubles, and that merges all of them. All right, so looking at proportional editing, uh, to enable it, you go down here, enable, and then move, and uh, it's basically like Maya's soft select tool. You can see this uh, ring that appears around it, that determines its influence. To change the size of the ring, you just scroll down, or scroll up with your mouse wheel. And uh, to change the type, you just go to this, and you can choose which type. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make a link duplicate really quick, and then I'll move on to modifiers. So in object mode, you do Alt-D, and that'll create a link duplicate. So if you go into edit mode, Anything I do to one, it'll do to the other. You can also use this for mirroring on a local axis. So, uh, scale Y, negative one to flip it on the Y axis. So now if I take this off of an axis, like this, and I need it to be mirrored, anything I do, it'll mirror it on that local axis, which is really useful. And uh, a quick side note on that is that Shift D instead of Alt D, that'll just duplicate anything in both edit mode and object mode. And finally, probably the two most anticipated functions added to Blender 2.5. The first one is this tool shelf here. If you want to add, make a button for any of the functions I just showed you, you just go up here and you search for it. Say you want one for a link duplicate, you just search a linked, click it, and it makes a button. So now if you go up here and click it, you can do that function. The second being if you go to File, User Preferences, under Input, you can change anything related to viewport navigation. You can change any of the hockeys I just showed you. Say you want to change Insert Edge Loop, you just search Loop, it'll bring up loop cut and slide that's the function you can change it from control R to whatever you want if you go over here you can choose to select with left mouse button instead of right which is probably most people's biggest problem with blender and you can change the orbit style to turntable all right thanks for watching i'm going to cut this one off here and at the next one i'm going to go at pretty much the same speed i'll go over uh how modifiers work i'll show you the cooler ones and i'll go over uv mapping and retopology.